In this particular tutorial, we're going to turn to the develop module in Lightroom. And uh, we're going to start off with some basic adjustments here. I've already imported uh, some photographs you can find on Canvas. So we're going to turn to the develop module, which you can find next to the library module. And we're going to turn to this first image here. Now, Lightroom works in a very intuitive kind of way. What does that mean? You basically need to work from top to bottom when you develop your photographs. At the top here, you can see the histogram. You can also have access to this histogram on your camera itself. A very useful tool to figure out whether your picture is properly exposed or not. I hope you remember if you've got a histogram that has a peak on the left, it's a picture that is clearly underexposed. Vice versa, if you've got a histogram that has a peak to the right, it's clearly overexposed. Let's get back to the original photograph. I can do that simply by clicking on reset here at the bottom right corner. Okay, the first thing uh, I can change here is the composition. Um, as you can see, um, some bars uh, pop up and when I drag these I can easily adjust my composition. I can do this from any corner or any other bar that appears in uh, this uh, rectangular box. Now as you can see uh, the ratio is kept, a ratio of 3, the longest side, to 2. That's because this item here is set to locked. If I'm going to unlock this, then I will be able to change the ratio of my photograph. But as I hope you remember, this is something I would disadvise you to do. If you want to change the ratio, my advice would be stick to the ratios that are already built in. For instance, the square ratio works really well too. But a ratio of, well, anything you come up with doesn't always work really well. Next to changing uh, the composition itself, we can also rotate the photograph simply by uh, putting the pointer just outside the frame and then by clicking and holding and then dragging to the left or to the right to make things turn. In this case, I would slightly turn this photograph. Why? I want to make this line in the background, even though it's not an architectural photograph, I still want to make it straight because it creates a more relaxed kind of feeling for this photograph. And another thing I do is I'm gonna uh, put the eyes at a third. This is a compositional guideline we will turn to in another class. I'm gonna try and come up with some symmetry as well. What do I mean with that? I'm gonna come up with about the same amount of space between her uh, uh, left, uh, the same space uh, from her left eye to this line here. Uh, and I want that to be identical to the space uh, between her right eye and this uh, line here. Okay, when I click back on that rectangular box, I'm now finished uh, changing my uh, composition. The other items you can find here, I'm not going to turn to all of them. I can already draw your attention to uh, this one here, which will allow you to clone or heal items. Now let me quickly demonstrate this. I'm not a big fan of this, I have to admit but it has its uses. If I press the space bar, by the way, uh, my pointer changes into a magnifying glass. Then by clicking on it, I zoom in on that particular spot. Now with this particular uh, uh, healing brush activated, I, for instance, can click on her freckles and they are cloned away just like that, very easily. Okay, put them back. I said I'm not very fond of this. The other items I'll turn to in when I'm dealing with the other photographs. Okay, up next is changing the white balance because as you can see, this is a big problem with this photograph. It has a very blue color cast to it. I can adjust the white balance myself by uh, dragging these or changing these sliders. There's one for blue and the opposite color being yellow. And there's a slider for green and the opposite color being magenta. I hope you remember this is the one you're definitely going to need when your uh, subject is lit by fluorescent lights, which have a green color cast to them. So as I said, you can do this manually or you can use this particular tool 
and then you need to uh, point this and click uh, at a spot in your photograph that shouldn't have any color to it so that should be a part that is white or grayish so if we just click on this part then the uh, Lightroom does the job for me it adjusts the white balance like that and now there is no color cast at all in this white tag on her shirt and as you can see her skin tones are quite accurate it's a bit overexposed so I'm gonna turn to the next item here at the top I'm gonna change my exposure and I'm gonna bring it down a bit this looks better and I have underexposed by 0 0.65 uh, of a stop no, uh, almost a, a stop. It works exactly the same as in your camera. This is underexposing by two stops. This is overexposing by two stops. But here you can set things very accurately. Okay, like this. The next sliders, they're pretty self-explanatory. You can adjust the contrast. Be careful with that because as you can see, if I add too much contrast, it no longer looks very natural. And this is a no-go as well, of course, this uh, image because becomes too flat. By double-clicking on the word contrast, by the way, I put the slider back in its original position. By decreasing the highlights and have a look at the histogram as well, whilst I change this, if I click and hold this slider, the part on the right in my histogram will mainly be affected. Yeah. And have a, look, have a look at what's happening uh, with the picture it's particularly the bright parts the highlights in other words that are changed when I change this particular uh, when I adjust this particular slider the same goes for the shadows it's a part in the histogram to the left that is going to be changed have a look at what happens here make sure that you don't lose any details in her hair for instance that's the darkest part with her and if I'm gonna make the shadows too dark in this case and I'm gonna make it even worse by uh, adjusting the blacks in this photograph as you can see now there is no detail any longer in her hair and that's a thing you should avoid I don't care when it happens with something in the background because that's not the subject of my photograph but in this case I should have detail in uh, her hair and as a matter of fact every single part of her there should be detail to be seen so be careful with adjusting the these different sliders make sure you don't lose any details you make sure you don't end up with any clipping so ending up with parts that are 100% white or 100% black I can adjust the texture and the clarity they're slightly related uh, this is particularly relevant for items in a photograph that have interesting patterns like for instance rocks or sand in this case uh, adding some texture might inc uh, improve the hair a bit. I'll exaggerate and you can see what happens. Yeah, But it does an awful job when it comes to the skin tones, obviously. So I'm going to adjust the texture only a slightly bit. The same goes for clarity. Have a look at what happens when I adjust the clarity slider. So I'm going to do things just a tiny bit here. The haze, that's particularly for landscape photography, um, when there's fog, for instance, if you're going to dehaze things, it will um, increase details. You can do this with portrait photographs as well, of course, but as you can see, it doesn't create a very uh, nice uh, result. Vibrance has got an effect on the color. I'll show you what it does exactly. The vibrance here is um, increased and here you get the exact opposite. And the same goes for the saturation of colors. Getting rid of all the saturation would simply lead to a black and white photograph. Increasing the saturation would lead to colors that are, in this case, way too increased. So I'm going to leave it as it is. You can um, edit your photographs by changing the profile. There are different profiles built in. Some of them are, uh, work really well, I would say. If you click on this, you have access to all the profiles that are built in you can simply uh, select only the color uh, profiles or only the black and white uh, profiles so just to show you there are all kinds of uh, profiles built in and it's very often a good starting point yeah 
particularly for landscape photography, uh, can be quite handy. A color profile I kind of like is the Vintage 6 profile, which gives your pictures a bit of a retro look. So if I click on this, I can even adjust the intensity or the amount of that uh, profile. Going to the right, it is um, more pronounced in that way. And here uh, you get rid of the entire profile because now the amount is set to zero. So back to 100 and you get this kind of look. If I close, I'm going to decrease the exposure even more because adjusting my or changing the profile has an effect on the outcome of uh, the photograph. Another thing I want to show you when editing this photograph is when you scroll a bit a bit more to the bottom, this particular window. Um, it will allow you to change the colors selectively. You've got an item for hue, which will allow you to change colors. Let me quickly demonstrate that. For instance, there's a lot of green in her shirt. If I go to the green slider, I pull it to the left, it has an effect on those green colors. Yeah, it completely changes her shirt. The same goes for the saturation. I can decrease the saturation of only the green in this photograph. And when it comes to the luminance, how bright things are, I can do the exact same thing. I can make her green a lot darker. A very neat tool with this particular window is this circle, circle here at the uh, top left corner. If I click on it, if I now go to this picture and if I click and hold, if I uh, move to the bottom with my mouse, I only select those colors. If I move it up, it will increase the luminance. And the same goes for the hue once more. I can change the color of her shirt by pressing and holding uh, the pointer and then I can change these colors. Mind you though, if I put my pointer on this particular color, her lips are quite identical. It will also have an effect on her lips. Yeah, it applies to the entire photograph. It doesn't apply things selectively. So let me demonstrate this. As you can see, I change that color of the drawing on her shirt, but have a look at what is happening to her lips. They are affected by this as well. So be careful. Um, yeah, make sure you keep the realistic colors with the person's face, obviously. Um, one final thing I wanted to demonstrate on the basis of this photograph is you can turn it into black and white. A bad idea would be simply decreasing the saturation. I sometimes have students who do a thing like that. They decrease the saturation and they boost the contrast because a lot of them like uh, very uh, uh, pictures with uh, a lot of contrast. But that's uh, uh, not the ideal way to turn your pictures into black and white. A better way would be using these built-in profiles once more. So I go to black and white and you can choose one that you particularly enjoy. So this one here, black and white number two, is a very high contrast uh, version. So I'll click on it. I can even increase things by changing the amount. But I'm gonna put it back to 100 hit close. I'm going to decrease the exposure even more because this is way too bright. Okay, that's about it. But then I think in this black and white version, her shirt draws away quite a lot of the attention from her face. And with this portrait photograph, it's of course mainly about the face. So what I can do, if I go back to the window I just demonstrated, I now only have the item uh, activated when it comes to black and white. I activate this particular tool, I go to a shirt, press and hold, and I drag it down, and now I can turn her shirt darker. And this, as a result, uh, draws your attention more to the face instead of the shirt. If I want to make the shirt even more interesting, I could make this part a bit brighter, like so. But once more, it does have an effect on her lips. So be careful with things like that. Okay, that's about it when it comes to this uh, first uh, picture. 
Um, what I would like you to come up with is the finished version you can also find on Canvas.